Today I'm chatting to Romana and Miriam from Regent Business School, and we're going to be chatting about a bunch of a bunch of stuff today. I just want to start by saying thank you for joining me, and I appreciate the time that you're taking out of your schedule, especially at this time of year where students are starting to register and get started, and everything's a little bit chaotic and all the rest of this. So, ladies, thank you for your time. Um, our starting point and the starting thing, that we, the first thing that I want to kind of ask you um, as a fellow lecturer myself is how you got into academics and lecturing and 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 why Miriam you want to go first okay so actually I started off tutoring and I found that I enjoyed it and then there was an opening at um, an, a private institute way back like I'm talking 29 years ago mm -hmm. rapid results college so I'm telling my age as well <laughs> And I started lecturing for them. Yeah. And I found that I really enjoyed it, especially when, when you find that students are understanding you and then you, you are looking at that um, results yeah. um, or, or the change in, in their understanding, et cetera. So I really enjoyed it. And then I thought, no, I need to get some formal training. So then yeah. I did a postgraduate diploma in tertiary education. Right. And then I started formally lecturing. Okay, and so were you qualified when you started tutoring? Yes, I, 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 had, I had my undergraduate degree. Okay. But then, like I said, I started, I was studying my master's. Okay. And, then okay. I, and I then completed it later on in time. Yes. Yeah. You know, as studying goes, you start something and then you decide it's not for you and you, you change course here and there. Yeah. But yeah. That, was my, that was my first initial foray okay. to lecturing. So, so it also it, it wasn't like it wasn't like I've always wanted to be a teacher. No, it yeah. wasn't. And it was also because my son was I had I uh, I was a young mother at the time. My son was just like a year and a half and this was a very good um, opportunity to teach. It was three mornings a week and it was still about um, the morning lectures used to run 8:30 to 10:30 or 10:30 yeah. to 12:30. Yeah. So you either had a, uh, you in, either finished at 10.30 or you finished, or you started at 10.30 and finished at 12.30. So it was ideal. It was suitable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And great for your lifestyle. And then I never went back. I never <laughs> entered corporate ever. Romani, yourself? So I, I qualified as a chartered accountant and that was going to be my calling. And I went into corporate and I worked right. as an audit supervisor, audit manager, and, and that was the plan. And what happened is, I quite enjoyed the tax side of it. I just spent a lot of time sort of touring the tax department at the firm. I did articles and then, and then we had a, an, an amazing tax partner who was quite, you know, very well accomplished, very knowledgeable. And then there was an, a younger lady that actually had just done her master's and she was actually, she was going to become a partner or something like that. And, and I realized that, okay, hold on, maybe this is something that that I might yeah. want to do. So yeah. still not lecturing, not academia, nothing like that. So I, ha I obviously had a chat with her and then I, I did my master's and sort of at the same time I had a baby. Okay. And so I decided that I was going to leave corporate, do my master's sort of like full time. But on the side, I opened up my own little uh, consulting business and it okay. was tech consulting. And that that took off quite well. So the tax consulting and, and in the meantime, I finished my master's and sort of somewhere just after I finished my master's, um, somewhere through the grapevine, somebody said, oh, you have your master's in tax. Why don't you try lecturing? And I thought, mm, lecturing, I don't know if I actually can do this, yeah. but let me try. So I, I, I went on as a, as a contract lecturer and mm. I did one, one tax module and it just went so well. Um, and I mean, not to say that I was great at it, but the feedback that I got yeah. from my students and from the yeah. classes and, you know, um, all that, like the evaluations and things that would come come through, I was actually apparently quite good at it. <laughs> and when that happens, you feel like, okay, maybe I should do more of this. Yeah. And I just took on more subjects. Um, and then eventually I took on a proper, like a six month semester contract and, and, and that's where it started. Yeah, And the consulting took a bit of a backseat, although I still mm. do it. Um, the lecturing just takes up most of my time. Lecturing, I still do a little bit of consulting on the side. Yeah. But I really I enjoy lecturing. Um, and I always yeah. tell Mariam, uh, people don't understand how, how we stand in front of a class and lecture to a group of adults. 
um, and enjoy it, you know, like it's so intimidating. <laughs> like people ask me to MC their wedding and I say, no, it's really not my thing. And they say, but, but you're a lecturer. I say, it's different <laughs> to teach your expertise to a group of students. It's different to stand in front of a wedding and talk yeah. to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it sort of happened um, in its okay. own little way. But it's I think that's so, that's so good to hear. My, my, my experience was, was similar-ish. It was the same for you. It was, it was like love at first sight. Once I had experienced that, um, again, it's not to say that I was amazing at it, obviously, you know, your first lecture or whatever, but it just it kindles something in you that you're like, actually, this is really exciting. I really love, you know, I really love being able to try and help someone figure something out or whatever. And like literally after two lectures, my entire life plan changed because before that I was going to be auto partner. You know, that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I was going to be an auto partner. And then after I'm like, stuff auto partner. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's, yeah, lecturer. <laughs> that's it, you know. Miriam, you, sorry, we, we didn't clarify your your specialism, your lecturing specialism. I'm in accounting and finance. Oh, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone <laughs> hears management, accounting and finance and it's like, no, how can you? <laughs> You know what? My my specialism is is auditing. I lecture auditing. People are always like, oh, shame, you know. But I'm like, fine, I'm fine. <laughs> it's just, it's financial management lecturers that I really feel sorry for because my students die of boredom in the class. You know, like they really don't like the subject, mm. but they can kind of, you know, they they can work their way through it. I think the problem with financial management is they kind of find it interesting, but they really struggle to do it. That's why tax is the winner because tax is interesting and it's yeah, easy. Right. Oh, and it's it's rock is the rock star. <laughs> tax is the rock star of the four. Oh, but managing that, accounting makes you think but, strategy. That's true, though. <laughs> auditing, <laughs> auditing means that you have to do, you have to communicate. Okay. You've got to like, you've got to think about the risks. So you've got to think about how stuff works. Taxation, and, and, I, and I just like to say, I always feel very sorry for the tax lecturers because your stuff changes every yeah every yeah <laughs> but i think i think that's why i enjoy it because it's always changing and you always have to look out for the yeah. updates and the newsletters and the amendment acts and so not my on your toes okay so it's really fascinating you both have some great experience in the uh the changes in exams, the profession, the expectations of students over a few years. Let's say in the past five, six years, have things changed as far as exams and assessments are concerned for students? Oh, definitely. Huge change. Huge change. For example, if you just take the ITC, if you take an ITC exam from five years ago, and you look at the way it is structured, the, you know, the, the nature of the questions, um, the content, etc. And if you look at an ITC uh, from, from this year, January, or, or for that matter, last year, September, you will see a huge difference in, in the way, um, in the nature of the integration, yeah. in the depth of questioning, um, in more application, out of the mm. box thinking, mm more um, critical thinking, analytical skills are required in yeah. answering current exams. Yeah. And, and not only ITC, it, ITC will dictate what goes behind. So your PGDA, your, your undergrad, et cetera, that you, you are, you are, you're expected to build a different skill set. Right. I think that's so valuable because when we talk about what's changed, I'm not saying the topics have changed. No. Okay, the, the, yeah, the details and tax have changed. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, you know, the room. but you know, auditing has still, you know, auditing is the same, like you know, there's revisions and standards and whatever, but like it's the same topics, principles. Yes, absolutely. it's not, it's not like costing has become more difficult, it's the same costing, but their expectation of what you can do with it and how you communicate that that's what's changed. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the cop textbook, the same jury, you probably used it when you when you studied. The principles don't change. No, no, they don't. So I, I think that's so I think that's so valuable to understand is that um, and that's what I you know I struggle with, you know, I struggle with students coming in because when they look at what they're gonna study, 
they base it on what they did last year, obviously. So they're, they're thinking, okay, this is what I did in the second year. So third year is going to be the same, but harder. You know, it's going to be more calculations or more detail or, uh, you know, more complicated stuff. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Um, the stuff is the same because in all honesty, um, and okay, I specialize, you know, I lecture UNISA syllabus. Um, there is nothing new in the CTA syllabus that isn't in third year. Margin, marginally. Like, minute, like there's a minute difference. The expectation yeah. is using language differently. I lectured UNISA for a zillion years, right? <laughs> and I noticed as well, exactly like you, the same conclusion that the concepts, the material, sometimes even the reference pages haven't changed. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in some instances, okay, like back. example, you CTA see? level yeah. one to CTA level two, you don't even get sometimes tutorial questions changing majorly as well. But students still struggle with it. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I don't think they can make the transition that it's not that greater volume or it's not a it's not a greater difficulty index, but it's how they going to use it in a mm. new scenario, the yeah. same knowledge, but yes. apply it to it differently. A, yeah. Apply it differently. That's what has changed. Hundred percent. I agree that that the content hasn't changed, that, like the topics haven't changed. And even I keep telling students from undergrad, I say to them, you're not really adding anything new to your knowledge base. Mm. It's the same sections, it's the same tax legislation, but it's just the way we expect you to answer the questions and the way we expect you to interpret the information and like Mariam said it's sort of like out of the box thinking yeah it's even changed since I did it it's so yes. different um and even as lecturers the way we expect it to set assessments it's just to prepare them for a very different world yeah pervasive skills teamwork storytelling I say to yeah. them in a tax you need to tell me a story you can't just dive straight into your conclusion yeah and they look at me like storytelling but this is tax what are you talking about 100 yeah. percent is because for them their focus is the answer so the mindset and the perfectionist mindset yeah. for my students i'm like okay so if i ask you is this tax deductible then you know for them it's like it's very important to go yes yeah and get that right and i'm like sweet you got one out of ten so this is the thing with students they 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 sometimes coming from all this um, academic, uh, ac you know, background where they, they believe that they have all the math sciences, etc., and they get all the calculations right. And then they say, but we still failed. Why did we fail? Yeah. Because you didn't translate the numbers, as Romana says, into a story. You right. didn't tell us what the numbers mean to you mm. and what you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, on, on the other side of the equation, when I, when I talk to students, they go, well, what, what should I have done differently? Unfortunately, when we look at earlier levels of studying for accounting, the predominant skills are still, we focus on your calculations, we Calculate. focus on definitions, we focus on memory. So, you know, in terms of, you know, the learning taxonomy, it's all right at the bottom there. And then there's the switch. So it's almost like, okay, now we want something different from you, but we never really focused on these skills. We never really mentioned them we never really taught you how to do them and now we expect you to be able to tell stories but where did they have a storytelling class <laughs> they were what? accustomed to delivering what's in their textbooks 100 percent. we taught them that you know when we like in first year we're like page one you know this is what the textbook go read you know pre-read the textbook he has your stuff this is what you have to know and then when they do the questions it all looks the same as the stuff in the textbook yes, and so they're no, kind of like no. yeah yeah they're, okay so this is how learning works okay, so this is how it's going to be. And then they get to third year and they get to PGDA and they're like, okay, the question doesn't, there's not, there's not in the textbook. Like you can't ask me this. That's the main one. This doesn't look like anything we've seen. And I think, but it's not supposed to be what you've seen before. For most of our students, their, their belief around successful learning is that by the time I do questions, I should have the answer. I should know the answer because you've given me everything I need. One, two, I'm supposed to get stuff right quickly and easily because that's how everything has, has always been. Um, and then 
if I knew my work well enough, then there wouldn't be any questions you'd ask me that I wouldn't know the answer to, as opposed to learning. You're not supposed to see the same thing ever again. You never will. Like no two of your clients are ever going to sit across the desk from you and go, I have, a, you know, if you're copy pasting problems and solutions from previous clients, you're in trouble. <laughs> so I think there's some massive skills missing in earlier levels of studying that I would like to see brought into earlier levels of studying. But at earlier levels of studies, you have to give them the basic, the foundation of the concepts, the foundation of the principles. So you are going to still be teaching the numbers and, and the order and the sequencing, et cetera. I think, I think they need to maybe around the, um, between second and third year, that's where the, the, the paradigm shift should come through. Yeah. You know, try to instill, um, you know, like a slight change, you know, in, in the skill set, um, move more towards creation of those analytical skills, etc. cetera. Yeah. But let's be honest, because, you know, I've, I've lectured first year accounting for, 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 for UNISA for, for, for many, many years. But as a lecturer, you're hamstrung by the exams and the assessments. So, you know, I can say to my students as much as I like, and I do this obviously in second year auditing because I know what's coming in third year <laughs> and I know what's coming, you know. So when I explain concepts to them in second year, I explain, you know, I explain the concept and, you know, the picture, the visual, da, 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 this is what it, because I know what they need to understand. But unfortunately, the exam requires them to define stuff, list stuff, memorize stuff, which means that their priority you know, and their mental approach is like, I'm only going to do what I need to do to pass the exam yes. because the exam is the representation of what I need to be able to do to pass. And so, you know, to, to, to a large extent, I'm like, I'm hamstrung by the style of the exams because no matter what I say about how you need to learn this, the, and understandably their focus is on, I just want to get through second year. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, just want to, like, I just want to get through those. But I think that, that's the nature of all students. They, the exam is their, is their goalpost and they will just do what is necessary to get, get past yeah. that. Yeah. But and I think for me, this is why these types of discussions are so valuable because um, if, you know, if you're a second year student and you've never really had a discussion or you've thought about or you've been exposed to what's waiting for you, and how it may be different, then that's going to shape your thinking. So I think for, for most of my students, all they've heard from other students is that third year is so hard and CTA is so hard. And no matter how much studying you do, you still fail. You know, they don't, they don't really, they don't have the same insights, you know, that, that we do from, from our side of the table. So all they're hearing is it's harder. And it's so much, but they don't understand how it's harder and they don't know why it's hard. And they also don't know why. You know, most of my students are still like, oh, you know, Psycho wants us to fail. <laughs> they ask these questions because our lecturer wants us to fail. That's why they're making it difficult. And I have to go back and explain, like, they're doing this because you're going to be sitting across from a client and we're trying to prepare you for that day. You know, what your client's going to expect from you. Your client is going to expect you to be able to apply your knowledge to their situation and to be able to explain what the hell's going on. You can't just slide a number across the desk and talk to your client. There it is. Like, I can't talk about this, but here's the number. But I don't know how to talk about it. Where did you get that number from? Yeah, I, I just trust me. It's right. Just, just trust yeah, me. Don't ask any questions. Don't ask any questions. Don't, don't, don't. Whether the nature of students have changed? Or... No, I don't think so. I think the nature, I think the underlying shift in skills is so fundamental, but it's not, it hasn't been brought into the sunlight yet. We're taking students, for me, it's like, we're taking students out of school who are really good with numbers, pattern analysis, um, you know, very quick with memory, because that's what school is, it's still very based on like, so we're taking these guys and we're saying, you guys are gonna be amazing accountants. And so we heard them, you know, into accounting. So we've got a group of people who have a very specific skill set and very specific strengths. And then in first year, we continue the, those same strengths, get them through. So and it's like, I'm that. learning, we're reinforcing. This is good. This is what I'm learning. I'm doing it. And then somewhere through second year, things start decreasing a little, but they're still getting through. 
So it looks and smells like learning because they're hearing definitions and they're hearing, but the memory is working and they're developing very good memories. If you ask me this, I say that. If the question looks like this, I say that. If the question looks like this, but there's this, then I say that. If it looks like this, but there's this, but you put that in. So they're developing very advanced databases of answers, of knowledge, but it's not the same as actually thinking about it. And then you hit third year and it's like, or actually in, in reality, you hit, PGDA, but we can see third year changing a lot now. You know, we can see third year is like, it's but shifting. They grapple with third year very well as well, some of them. Yeah, Those but third year has shifted now. Because, you know, APC has shifted and then mm -hmm. ITC has ITC. shifted and is shifting. Now PGDA is shifting okay. to match, you know, to match, which means we've now had quite a gap between third year mm -hmm. and PGDA. So what's happening? Third year is starting to shift. And now there's a very big gap between second year. And, third year. and they can't adapt. And, and now it's like, you know, what, what's gone wrong? But where in all the rest of the years were we reinforcing, guys, your ability to communicate? Guys, communication is key. No, 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 that's not what we were reinforcing. We're like, here's the calculation. Here's the number. Give me the definition. Here's the list. Do you remember the detail? Do you remember? And they're like, sweet, I'm getting this. I'm getting it. And I'm going, okay, just, just tell me what depreciation is. I don't know. <laughs> why do I depreciate? Just talk to me. Just talk to me. Just tell me why you depreciate stuff. Uh, this isn't going to be in the exam. <laughs> I, was like, okay. I always, you know, I always say to students, like when I have these discussions, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong because I'm, you know, the schooling system and the system that's brought you through this has reinforced and created certain skills. But unfortunately, there is now a gap. How do we bridge that gap? How do we bridge the gap? And first of all, they need to realize what the gap is. And this is why I want to have these conversations. The gap is not the calculation is more difficult. The gap is, do you know which calculation to choose? To choose and where? And where? Calculate and discuss <gasps> is just too much. You know, it's so strange that the students that grapple with all this is also the students, those are the students that come with all the A's from the trick and they think they're going to ace it. And then they, they really get depressed. I have seen of course, of course. students, I have, I have seen students break down, literally me. cry because they can't cope with it. And that was me. And the, again, this is why, um, this is why I, I work on, this is why I work on, on mindset on, on, because You've got a whole bunch of people that are used to excelling. Exactly. I put the effort in and I get, you know, I get the results. So I'm used to excelling. Everybody tells me how smart I am. I've got great potential. I've got, I'm going to be a great accountant and I'm still studying. I'm still working. I'm still studying, but it's not working anymore. So your whole world is shattered. Like your understanding of how the world works and what I'm like, this, I don't understand what's broken. Like the, one of the biggest issues that our students have is that we're taking students who we're brought up to be perfectionists and believe that getting A's and getting the answer right and getting it right quickly is important and valuable. And now we put them in a place where we go, you need to get this wrong a couple of times. <gasps> no. <laughs> you cannot get it wrong. That's the only way they will learn. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't get it wrong. I, I don't believe you can learn. 100%. Manak is like that. Manak is the worst for them. And yeah, you're 100% right. It's, it's it, the the style of thinking and the mindset needed to approach financial management is not the same mindset that was good at getting A's at school. That's true. It's not the same person. So Strangely, it's, it's the ones that didn't get the A's that actually cope with Manac very 100%. often. They realize that part of the learning journey is like, what did you say now? Okay, wait, I understand that, but I, okay, yeah, okay. Problem solving skills. Our guys are like, nope, must get it fast. fast. Straight in, straight out. That's the way it's going to be. And they get frustrated when they don't get it right. Breaking. Frustrated. And how, like, how many, how many students in your experience do you know at CTA who have walked away from the profession for this reason? Enough. Enough. More how, than like, it, yes. it breaks my heart because it's got nothing to do with how smart they are, does it? If only they had some resilience and just stood their ground and learned it. 100%. If only they were okay with what learning really is. They, they, a lot of students just think, you know what, if we continue uh, working through problems in the same old way, they will pass. 
But remember, if you keep practicing the same stroke, it doesn't mean to say you're going to perfect it. You've, yeah. got, to, you've got to try a different... But you, you also have to ask, like, has the game changed? What does the game require from you? Well, game has changed. Game has changed. The players need to up, up their skills. Players need to get on a different field. But it is, you, you know, we need to get off the field where this, you know, the basic skill is calculation, memory. We need to get off that field and get onto the field where, you know, we're analyzing, thinking, communicating, storytelling, critical thinking, debating, discussion. Very unlikely that you'll find these skills like, you know, equal in, in the same human being. They're generally fairly mutually exclusive. I see the changes and I'm, I'm so happy that they're there. Like I'm really happy with where the profession is moving, but I feel like a lot of the students we're dealing with are sitting in this gap. Like Netherland, no, neither here nor there. They need yeah. to break that gap. Yeah, I think in 10 years time, this will have smoothed itself out, you know, and the, the assessments and exams and years and stuff will have shifted so that, you know, it leads them towards this more. But I think there's a lot of students that are left in this gap at the moment. I think that the only thing that's a little bit encouraging is sometimes halfway through the year, I get students that, that contact me and they say, tell me what to do, what I need to do different. Yes. I'm yeah. failing. Yeah. Just tell me what I'm doing wrong. Mm. And they're willing to overhaul the entire plan. Yes. You know? But I mean, this is halfway yeah. through the year, two assessments down. But they're really willing to. Let, let's be honest, our students work hard. You know, we might, we, we might be frustrated that they're putting the en energy in the wrong place. They work so hard and they still yeah. can't get to grips with, with the material. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and Romana, as, as you're saying, it's, it's, it's so great when someone approaches you and says, okay, I realize something needs to change. Tell me what that is. And I will trust you that you will give me the information that I need. And they need to understand that it's okay not to pass a test. Yes. But they can learn from their mistakes. If you had one thing to say to a student who's starting their, their PGDA this year, about let, let's, let's focus this on, on your subject, on financial, on financial management. I would say keep an open mind and read. So the comprehension is so important. Mm. Because if, if you read with understanding, they will, they will appreciate the import of the application that's coming through from those principles. So I think for me, I'm like a stuck record. Read from the first alphabet to the last full stop. Yeah. But now what do you think is different from the way that they are reading at the moment? What are you finding that they're doing? They are reading a scenario or a case and taking it at face value, but they're not reading the implications. Okay, so they're not reading the and thinking. They're not, so they're not, for example, if they're, not, if they're reading a sentence, they're not considering what would the impact of the sentence be on A, B, C, D, et cetera. Okay. So yeah. they're, not, they're not extending it outside of that scenario okay so instead of just it's not just read the words yes okay so that's I, I kind of call it when I work with my students I talk about it as reading versus looking you're looking at the words and you can read each one of them but you're not grouping them together yes. and going this is what it means talk about it as they they're keyword reading triggers so what's they look for triggers. Exactly. They're looking for triggers. So I read the sentence, but I'm not actually reading the sentence. I'm looking for stuff that I've seen before. Things that trigger what the answer is going to be because they want to get back to the familiar. And, and the one thing they must never do is they must never read the required before they read and interpret and try to, to <sighs> process the scenario. You are right. trying to put it in, you know. I 100%. They must not ever give up if, they, if they're looking at answering a question because yes. they have this habit like, oh, I just don't understand. I don't get it. So let me just look at the solution. Then I call it a spoiled paper. They must rather throw it in the bin. I tell them rather go and have a manicure 
I, yeah. I tell the girls, go have a manicure. I tell the guys, go walk your dog, go to the gym. That will be more beneficial in clearing your mind and yeah. understanding the concept and reading the solution because you've spoiled the game. I tell them it's like a game. You know, they're so quick with their fingers to go from level one to level two <laughs> yeah. level three on the games that they play. So yeah. they need to up their game skills. Yeah, the need to do that is because they are uncomfortable with uncertainty. You're putting them in a position where they don't know the answer and they don't know what to do and they hate it. So they want to get out. It's like their brain is going, give me out of here. Give me out. I don't, like, don't want to be in a position where I don't know. So the easiest way to solve that is to go back to the theory or to go back, you know, go to the memo. Process is more important than the end. 100%. Process is more. But where did we teach them that? What part of their studies up to CTA did we reinforce process over answer? When? Where? We haven't. The education system has let them down. It's true. And you can't blame them, yeah. I can't blame them for that. You really want them to, to make such a huge shift. It is a huge shift. It's, it's, it's a burden, eh, on them. It's tough. It is tough. And again, as you say, it's heartbreaking because they will, they'll put the hours in it. They do, yeah. eh? These guys are I hard think work. Students that, that put in phenomenal hours and they still don't get it right. I and I feel like crying for them. I know. <laughs> I know. And my heart breaks for all the students who could have done it, but walked away from it because they thought they weren't smart enough. Because they couldn't get the answer right. And then you get those students that will say it's us. <laughs> we yeah. didn't teach it right. <laughs> we didn't teach it right. Yeah, I know. I do. I'm like, yeah, she just wants me to fail. No, no, she really doesn't. <laughs> she hates us. <laughs> she, she just hates us. No, I promise you. She... You're the mean girl, hey? <laughs> Math the mean girl. <laughs> Look, you're not getting away from that. <laughs> Man, I know gonna everyone's going to call us meanies. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be the mean girl forever. This it's actually been very interesting as well to hear your take um, on everything. It's encouraging to know that we're all on the same page. <laughs> it, is. Really? it is. It is. It's true because you do as a lecturer. You're like, why aren't and they never pass or saying. Yeah, you know, you're like, why aren't my students passing? Yeah, I'm trying so hard. What am I doing wrong? I know. <laughs> you like self reflect and you think, hey, where did I go off here? Why? Why is my password not equivalent to tax for example <laughs> well mine isn't that much higher it's just a little bit <laughs> it's always higher though it's always yeah math is the meanie <laughs> it's always Ma like manic right at the bottom auditing is like just above math <laughs> financial then, accounting is always on top because yeah. they have all the rules it's all the nice rules and if this then and the rules are tough the rules are complicated but once you know them you know them it's easy to find yeah. until i ask you to discuss the rules <laughs> and then we're back down to auditing again because <laughs> auditing was the first subject that you had to communicate yeah, that's true that's very true so for, for me i'm like i've always been like communication that's that's the problem with auditing is the communication skill the underlying communication skill and oh, yeah, the auditing it's just and then when discussion questions started filtering into all the other subjects and they started failing i was like i told you so because now tax i mean how many more itc questions are tax based that are discussion questions now yeah i mean compared to before um, yeah. there's so much I mean in fact even in our assessments we're noticing that we're moving so much towards discussion that we actually have to remember that hold on it needs a balance like you know we've got to throw in some calculations uh, yeah. because even we're moving so much um, yeah. towards just discussion yeah. and then we have to keep you know taking into account that you know at this it's they're the same students we can't just throw them into this deep end yeah it's almost like saying we have to put in some easy calculation <laughs> automatically because so it's run away. It makes it it makes it easy, you know. Um, yeah. It can be the most difficult section, but as long as it's a calculation question, yeah. it's it's the easy part of the paper. But so nothing that puts in calculations and we don't get it right <laughs> <laughs> because because they don't know because you're not telling me which calculation to use. That's that's what I'm saying. That, don't that was know. my problem. Choose the right calculation. Yeah. Yeah. That's in, also yeah. in, in CTA, I kept on failing these stupid manic tests. And I was like, if you could just tell me which one you wanted me to use, I could do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you knew all the calculations, you just didn't know which <laughs> one. Where they go, I don't know why. I don't know. So I do a lot of work with ITC preparation. It's interesting now that the tax components of the ITC stuff is the worst because that while they can do the calculations, 
they have no idea how to structure discussions for, for taxation. And like so, you said, there's a minimum amount of marks for the calculation. So they still yeah. fail that part of the question. Yeah. Even the calculation is correct because there's yeah. nothing else. There's yeah. no story. Tax, you guys are, you're coming to our group. <laughs> <laughs> It's, and it's showing. It is showing. Yeah, you're coming um, to join us. <laughs> I'm already at rock bottom, so I'm just gonna zip it. <laughs> She's joining you. <laughs> She's gonna be joining you soon. <laughs> I think it's a very valuable discussion to have for people to be aware of before they start CTA. Is like, you're gonna fail questions. I want you to fail questions. I want you to sit and try. I want you to think about it. I want you to struggle with it because it changes the way you think. And that's what we need from you. I want you to focus on storytelling. We need you to focus on like, yeah, but how did I get there? The answer is eight. Great. One out of 10. Ah, that's for the right answer, right exactly. calculation. <laughs> you know, the great thing is for, 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 for your students, they need to know that, they need to know from, from their perspective, they need to come forward and ask, what do I need to do differently? I'm struggling here. It's not working. Help me out. And that's what we're there for. Yeah. that's what you're there for like but they don't want to come forward they don't want to let you know that they're struggling i don't know what's the impediment to that oh i, mean, I do why don't they want to ask oh it's obvious yeah, you've got a perfectionist you've got a fixed mindset who's always gotten everything right and in school the guy who was always asking the questions he was the loser that is oh, true poor guy. Oh, he's never gonna get it right. oh. the people who were praised the people who got the good feedback the people who got the like, oh, you guys are going to be accountants were the people who didn't ask. I don't get it. If I'm asking you for help, it makes me weak, vulnerable, and stupid. I don't want you to know that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm also worried that you're going to think that I'm not studying. Yeah. I don't want you to know I, I am studying. I'm studying. I don't understand why this is not working, but you're going to think that I'm not studying. So I don't want you to see. I don't want you to know how bad it is. So th there's a massive, massive mental impediment to, to, to them letting you know that they're struggling. The huge li lifetime worth of values and belief systems that they have to overcome before they'll come to you and ask a question. That's true. I always tell them it's the unasked question that's stupid. And they, there will probably be like 10 others who have the same question in their minds. I'm like, oh, sure, someone asked. <laughs> like, Thank oh. God somebody asked it. <laughs> No one wants to ask, but everyone wants to hope that someone else asks. That someone asks. Like, gets, gets that's answered. Not me. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I can see it. I understand it. They think, oh, as a professional, you're supposed to know all the answers. So, like, it's only stupid people who don't know the answers. And I'm like, let me tell you, we shall, we shall check in with you, Romana, after test one and see how, <laughs> see how your <laughs> marks are doing. How tax has been. <laughs> we'll see if you're joining us here at the bottom. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or let's see some miracle takes place and math just moves oh, up a little bit <laughs> the Absolutely. day the day that math has like the highest pass rate is the day that we're all like no the world has turned on its head something's gone that's wrong the day we need to worry <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> I used to get some you need some very high pass rates, let me tell you that. Manic, yeah. My 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 sympathies to you. Just seen the ITC January and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a huge shift, eh? Yeah. <sighs> but that's for for you know, for all the guys that are are watching this and they're going into it's good. You're fine. You're good. Some changes are needed. And it's probably not the types of changes that you thought were going to be needed. Mm. You don't need to work harder. You need to work differently. And you need to be prepared to feel uncomfortable. You need to be okay with feeling stupid. Because if you don't feel stupid, you're not learning something. The smartest people in the world are the ones who go like, wait a minute, what's going on there? So if, you, if you're in CTA, if you're doing PGDA, or you're repeating worse yet, and you're wondering like, what went wrong? I have to study so much harder this year. No, that's not the answer. I have to study differently this year. I have to challenge the way that I believe learning works. I have to focus on communication. I have to focus on application. I have to focus on my understanding of what's important. So guys, if you're panicking, don't panic. We're here. We've got you. Your lecturers are here. We've got you. You can hear that they care about you. They want the best and for you. And they know what the problems are. And they know what you're struggling with. Before you've come and said, I really don't understand costing. Ma'am knows you don't understand costing. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> And yes. we'll help you.
absolutely we we're there for you we'll help you but it's it's important that you come forward and go not working ladies thank you so much for your time uh, i really appreciate i really appreciate your time i do uh, i would like to have have more chats like this but you know we shall we shall see we'll shall try and work it into schedule now that you're here you won't get rid of me <laughs> Uh, I hope you have a fabulous weekend um, and um, yeah, hopefully we can chat again soon. Thank you so much. It's been lovely. Thank you.